Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Film Discover. Bar Rescue is an American reality series that airs on the Paramount Network. It stars John Taffer, a longtime food and beverage industry consultant who specializes in nightclubs, bars, and pubs, and he offers his professional expertise plus renovations and equipment to desperately failing bars in order to save them from closing. This is ridiculous. Matt is refusing to tell a customer how much alcohol is in a drink. O-Face Bar. Taffer's first walkout was the trailer-themed O-Face Bar in Council Bluffs, Iowa. In season three, Punch Drunk and Trailer Trashed episode. The owners Matt and Karen named the bar after a vulgar expression and engaged in terrible behavior to their staff. In one of Bar Rescue's most infamous moments, Matt and Karen responded to a staff member fight by firing the victim, bartender Sarissa, instead of its instigator, manager Amanda, as John demanded. Because they liked Amanda more, Matt and Karen responded to a staff member fight by firing the victim, bartender Sarissa, Instead of it, I can't finish the last two pieces. Like <laughs> instigator, manager Amanda, as John demanded, because they liked Amanda more. John was infuriated and almost left on the spot. The owners made amends by firing Amanda and apologizing to Sarissa, but this cost a day of training. Their treatment of customers was little better. Matt refused to give customers the recipe to their signature orgasm shot, and bartender Dave was irresponsible with fire. After an abysmal stress test, they wasted still more time by bickering. I bared out my differences with all these people. I've talked, I've discussed with really? And with family drama, Karen blamed security guard Sick, one of the bar's only decent people, for shortcomings. Karen also had a drinking problem and carried her own bell to ring when she wanted more alcohol. The entire staff drank at work, but not to the extremes that Karen displayed. She had a lousy attitude, refused to accept personal responsibility, and habitually blamed Matt, who in turn berated anyone who snapped at her. Yet another memorable scene showed the staff and owners spent most of their time arguing in the back room instead of training, while John and his experts waited in vain at the bar. John had to go into the back room, break up the fight, and list each action that resulted in his decision to declare their bar unworthy of rescue. What's wrong with Karen's attitude tonight? She's still pissed off. I think she's really frustrated right now. The final straw for John was his background check of the staff, which exposed evidence of criminal acts, a video of Matt slapping Dave and offering Sick a raise to throw him out a window. Matt showed no remorse. John refused to involve himself or risk his reputation for people with such a lack of morals and professionalism. He refused to rescue their bar and walked out. An incensed Matt yelled at Sick while the latter gave his final thoughts. Sick was later fired and Amanda rehired in a follow-up episode of Back to the Bar, but its negative depiction and dreadful brand identity were unchanged. Drink and food sales were unimproved, although Matt displayed promise by removing a regular who acted inappropriately towards a female spy. You guys are a mess. I ain't scared of John. You have no responsibility. Return to second base. John's second walkout occurred in season four's second base third strike episode. This began as a planned re-rescue of a baseball-themed second base in Orange, California. The prior episode, Bikini Bust, was then called Extremes Sports Bar. At first, Gary, who was promoted to manager at the end of Bikini Bust, appeared to be at fault because he did not seem to do his job and blamed successful bars nearby for stealing customers. At one point, Gary became so agitated, he pushed down a retaining wall. John Taffer called us once and he's absolutely right. Instead, John discovered that owner Terry didn't give his staff tools or funds required to operate his bar, constantly replacing old bartenders with new ones. He didn't even meet and abandoned John's menu and uniform changes. Terry invested all of Second Base's funds into a supposedly more successful new bar instead of making improvements or even covering basic operating expenses for Second Base. He refused to listen to criticism and badmouth John and his expert Lisa Marie Joyce. Despite this, he still expected John to come in and save his bar again without personal effort. John, with his characteristic insistence on owner responsibility, had no intentions of cooperating with this notion. But it's an effort. So now f everything. Do nothing. Is that we, what you're we've saying? We've been trying to do everything that we could possibly do. After a stress test, which John deemed one of the worst he has ever seen, he gave Terry an ultimatum. He would remodel the bar, but only if Terry put up $30,000 of the expense himself. Terry now claimed his new bar lacked enough success to support second base and refused. Angry, disgusted, and disappointed because one of his favorite bar concepts ever had been ruined, John called Terry a slime bucket and departed. Terry's final excuse to John was that he would have agreed to contribute to the new remodel if he had the money, to which John replied to Terry that he would have had the money if he ran second base the right way. John did, however, promise to assist Second Base's staff in finding new jobs. This is your staff. Go fire his. 
Black Light District. John's third walkout was the punk rock themed Black Light District in Long Beach, California in season four's Drunk on Punk episode. Owner Dave refused to accept any changes to the building, drink menu, or music choices. He would only play punk rock, deeming anything else as selling out. He made it clear he would rather have his bar closed than play another genre. He displayed an immense ego, going as far as to insult customers who criticized the music, along with John and mixologist Phil Wills. He sneered at Phil's attempt to prepare a fruit-based drink menu that sold well at other music-themed bars. Because it's on you. Because your ego will destroy anything. The Vandals bassist, Joe Escalante, who acted as a recon spy, pointed out that as much as he himself loved punk rock, it was a specialist genre unlikely to keep the bar in business by itself. Instead of finding fault with Escalante's knowledge or logic, Dave chose to respond with a personal attack. He mocked Escalante's grandpa sweater and implied that the 35-year-old veteran of the punk scene was too old to get punk. The insulted bassist departed from the episode. The only change Dave was interested in was the addition of a kitchen. John found this ludicrous, since Dave couldn't even run a bar right. Dave's bar was filthy, and he proved more of a hindrance than help during the stress test. When Dave told John to his face to leave, insisting he knew better, John happily complied. The staff, especially jilted investor Gabe, was dismayed by Dave's apathetic attitude and the hope that John took away with him. Well, go back to the airport and fly the f out of here. Good luck on your corner. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen now, because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.